wanted to start with that because the Lord has been talking to me a lot about how the enemy is after the little child in folks. Um, I saw an article this week that the Prime Minister of this country, um, he will not allow for Christian uh, Bible camps to get any kind of government funding because they're against abortion. I want to tell you that Satan hates the child. Mm -hmm. Satan hates the child, and I will give you a biblical backup for that. Um, I'll start in, to, to say this first, in Psalm 8, verse 2, Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. Now what this means is that the Lord has ordained perfect praise out of the mouths of babes, innocent ones innocent ones. And this country, and certainly in America, and much of the Western world, what we have today is just such a lack of protection of children. Mm -hmm. We are killing them in the womb, let alone the abuse, the child sex trafficking, the drugs, the things that children see today. Um, it just makes you weep, and it's very discouraging. Um, in John, uh, St. John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, But the hour cometh and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seek, seeketh such to worship him. God is the spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So I want to go back and say, the child is the purest Christ, the, from the lips of children. Matthew 18, verses 1 to 7. At that time, at that same time, came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called the little child unto him, and, and set, them, set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, to be converted, God regenerates a soul which gives us ears to hear. He, he makes us able to hear the word of the gospel. But to be converted is to hear the gospel and to have that wash our minds so that we begin mm. to become innocent in this world as a little child. And mm. this is what Jesus is talking about. To be born again means that we start over from ground zero as a child and we relearn everything because what some of us learned in childhood and what we internalize messages from church, messages from school, messages from friends, messages on the schoolyard, messages from parents, just broken, broken messages that the devil sent to kill the child within us and to keep us bound. So Jesus says, unless, except you be converted, Whosoever, therefore, shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones, which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must meet needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. So the point here is that the devil is absolutely, from the time we are born, trying to exploit and defile us so that we function in wrong ways and when we do function in wrong ways then he says I gotcha 
I got you. You got no way out. You are trapped. You cannot get back to God. There's nothing you can do. You are cut off and you are mine. Chapter 1 of Jeremiah, verses 4 to 12. Then the Lord, then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Now, who ordained thee? Who knew thee? Who formed thee? God. Before the devil ever gets a hold of you. Before God speaks this. Then I said, Ah, oh, Lord, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatever I command thee, thou shalt speak. In Isaiah chapter 11, And there, shall come forth a rod of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. I want to say this. Every one of us who has the seed of Christ in us and has the Holy Ghost in us is like Mary. The, the child Christ is ever being conceived within us. So everything that God is talking about here that is Christ's is also ours. Because he said, my father has given me all authority in heaven and earth. And that authority is within us. But what has to happen is the conversion. So that God brings the light or the life, he puts the life in us, but that life has to come to light. Mm -hmm. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. Neither shall he reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the young lion, and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. Now the little child inside of you and I that is leading is the child Christ born within us. We are a totally new creation in him and we are like Mary saying, Lord, be it unto me as thou hast said. And we are letting that thing be born in us as the seed of the word gets planted. It goes inside and it grows something. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the lean child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thank you, Jesus. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and the rest shall be glorious. Now, in Exodus 1, we see the other side of things. Pharaoh and the king of Egypt spake to the midwives, verse 15, Exodus 1 to the midwives of which the name of one was Shipra, and the name of, of the other Pua. And he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then, he, then, shall, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God, and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing and saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, 
Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Therefore, God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mightily. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save. So here we see the beginnings of infanticide, but there's the boy child, the child Jesus Christ. And it's because the scripture tells us later that he is going to bring many sons to glory. So even though I'm a daughter in the natural, I am a son by Jesus Christ. And that is what is being brought to glory, is the son of God within me. Matthew 2. In Matthew 2, we hear another, another one who is in authority and who is being used by Satan to kill children. See, the thing about this is the kingdom of this world has not submitted to Jesus Christ yet. There are powers and principalities that want to kill Christ in you and in me. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he gathered all the chief priests, scribes, and people together, he demanded them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired them diligently, what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem. He said, Go search dil diligently for the child. When ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come unto the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, Take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will strike the young child to destroy him. So even as Mary has birthed the Savior, and Joseph is fathering, stepfathering, because God is father, you see where God is calling each of them to protect that child. We have an inheritance in Jesus Christ. And sometimes when I look around the kingdom of God, what I see is a battle of the wounded children. They, they, they want what someone else has. They want another person's office. They want their anointing. They want whatever they have. And that is the spirit of Herod. It's the spirit of Pharaoh. And it's because they themselves have wounded children that have not surrendered, have not been saved, have not been changed. There are many unsaved people claiming to have an office in the kingdom of God that they're not even gods yet. And they may never be. Because if they don't repent, if there is no opening up from God the life and then that thing brought to light so that there's fruits of repentance then they're not gods. When he arose, he took the young child, his mother, by night and departed to Egypt and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord of the prophet by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth 
and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem in the coast thereof from two years and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying in Ramah, there was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they were not. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph say, in Egypt, saying, uh, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. In the long run, the enemies of God will always be defeated. But in the short run, it is very painful when Christ is being born in us and people are continually trying to kill it or take our inheritance. And all the while, God is bringing us out of Egypt, which is the land of bondage, the land of attachment to our sin, to our, our wrong nature. In John 12, 44-50, Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my word and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejected me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know this, his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. The, the Son spoke the Father. That was the only language the Son had, was the Father. And for those of us who are Christ, we speak the Son. And we live that version. We have the mind of Christ. We are being renewed day by day as we seek him out in the word, in worship, and in prayer. To let Christ be born in us. And to give him the pains of the past. The lies of the past. Because we are wrestling not against flesh and blood. They are not our enemy people. But the principalities and powers that Satan uses to see the Christ child destroyed within us. It takes great courage to face everything you've been through because you say, Oh, I've been there once. That was too painful. I don't want to open that again. But God does. Because he'll bring you back through the same knot hole you went through the first time. And it'll be horrible. But in the end of it, you will be clean washed by the blood, washed by the word, and formed into the image of Christ. The word says when we see him, we shall be like him. We shall see him as he is. The image of Christ will be formed in us. That is the Father's whole agenda in every Christian life, is to form Christ. Lord, I just pray today that you would touch lives, that you would save souls, Father God, that you would regenerate people so that they can hear your word and they can be washed by your blood and by the word and that Jesus would be formed in them, that they would be hungry for your Holy Spirit, that they would want to be full of Holy Ghost and lovers fire for your goodness and for your word. I pray, Lord, that you would help each of us to surrender the broken little child within us, to be courageous and to go through the pain that that causes, and to be set free that Jesus might be born in us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.